Well, good morning and welcome to Simply Made Homestead. I'm Marion, and today we're going to start our day by feeding the pigs. Andrew has already taken care of most of the, all of the chickens. Need to gather eggs still. But let's get these pigs fed first. Where's it going? Where's it going? Oh, there went some. Oh, on your head. That's terrible. Crazy babies. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Give me and I forgot to turn the water on, so I'm gonna have to go back and turn the water on. Get the water buckets all filled up. Now with our pig food, we let it ferment a little bit. And uh, like for a 24 hour period, we have a morning bucket and an evening bucket and we fill it up with whatever we're gonna feed them. There's always some grain in there. And we usually add a little minerals and some eggs from the ducks and uh, we'll just let it sit there for 24 hours. And then we bring it out. The, the grain has absorbed all the water and it has a little bit of a fermentation. Now, if we have some cold weather and it stays with us, we'd probably let it uh, sit there for a little bit longer, maybe two days. But because it's so hot down here, we just let it sit there for a day because it'll start growing mold and things we don't want. It's just too warm uh, really quick. But uh, they love it. Which they love everything, right? Pigs will eat everything. Now you can understand the saying, as happy as pigs in slop, sure makes them happy. Hey girls, how you doing? Little mamas love it when it's time to eat too. Are you ready to eat girls? Is it time to eat? Let's go, come on. Let's go get some grain put in that bucket. Come on girls. Just about need a refill. Yeah. I literally have to stand here with my foot between the things here to keep Fee from eating Athena's food. Well, she gobbles it down really fast. And Athena, she's a little more of a delicate eater. A little more up thing. You still got some in your pan there. No, no, not nice. But every day when I come out, twice a day, I'm feeling their ligaments. Uh uh, see? No. I think that you gotta eat faster, sister. I'm feeling their ligaments right here, right above their tail. You can squeeze right there. And when it starts getting really super soft, where you feel like you can almost touch it through there, you know that she is, labor is near. And she's not, I mean, she shouldn't be near labor, but this is our first baby, so I'm constantly checking just to kind of get a feel of what it feels like. And hers is definitely looser than Fiona's. Come here, baby, it's okay. So we just have to keep an eye out. Now the, the girls, they get a little more of an assortment of hay than the boys do. They get either peanut, alfalfa, or orchard. And orchard is everybody's favorite. And the boys, they just don't get alfalfa. There's something in there, I forget what it is, but it's just, they tend to have urinary problems if you uh, feed them the wrong things or, and uh, so we don't give them alfalfa. But alfalfa is really good for the girls because it helps to produce milk and, uh, and we want that because they're getting ready to have babies and we need to be able to feed those babies and give mama and daddy some milk too, yes? Yes. <laughs> oh, I forgot your water bucket. Hey, Bucky Boos. Ready to eat? Come on. <laughs> Say 
so for us, it's a really busy time of year right now. Getting the girls ready to uh, have their babies. And the boys have just turned a year old. So they'll be getting their CD and tea and some copper bolus. Oh, 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 no, Tippy, please come back. Oh, Lordy. Oh, good Lord. Come on, Cody's. Come on, babies. Come on, babies. Let us something always get loose. Come on, goats. Come on, boys. That's a good boys. Good boys. Oh. No, back. The boys are different, that's for sure. Hey, pretty girls. Hey, pretty girls. Hey, pretty girls. Y'all want to come out now? Now you can come out. We got the boys taken care of. And once a day, I do like to let the girls out and just let them walk around, get a little exercise. Because they are pregnant and they really don't get any when they're in there. Just They just kind of lay around and hang out. And uh, they really need to move around more. Let's go get the pigs watered. They really don't need much in the way of water, but we're going to freshen it up for them. Well, y'all, our Cornish... Okay, I kept calling them Cornish Cross because that's what we had before. Ours are officially Cornish Rock, um, which is pretty much... I mean, it's very much the same thing in a lot of ways. But anyway, still a fast growing meat bird, just like the Cornish Cross. And they're growing like crazy. We are at week four, and I can't wait to show you. Check this out, forgive the paper. Our dogs get into stuff and just shred it all over the yard. There they are. Look at them. Let me get one out for you. We're in the shade right here still, y'all, so we don't have that pretty lighting. Come here, little fat boy. But y'all, this is four weeks old. Isn't that something? Look at the size of those feet. Big old chicken. Almost fully feathered. And doing really good. Nice and warm. Now, every day they get moved, as you can see here. <laughs> they leave quite the trail. And while it looks kind of ooky and uh, weird right now, this will be the so green and just absolutely beautiful in no time. Especially if we could get some rain, but we don't have any of that in our near future and it looks like we're supposed to have a pretty dry winter. So we are going to come in and check on the brass. Can't wait to show you what they've been up to. Finally, they have finally started laying. So we have two roosters and four hens that we kept. We have three that we have put in the tractor and that we are um, feeding, trying to fatten up a little bit that we are gonna butcher. They just didn't quite meet the standards that we want to, to go with. So, and we really wanna taste the meat because it's supposed to be just absolutely excellent. And what we have found is an egg. Now this is number five. This is our fifth egg that we've gotten. And you can see they're really small, but that's because they're just started laying. And they will get bigger. We've got one that's really wanting to get in there. She was in there when I walked up and then I, I scared her off. I didn't mean to. But she is back in there. So we should have another egg here in a little bit now i do like to worm my chickens in october and the reason being is because we just went through a really hot humid 
bug field season here in Central Florida and they have gone through their molt. They're finishing up with their molt. Their laying has already gone way down because of the molt and then in October the days are much shorter so they're just they're barely laying so it's a really good time to do their give them their worming and then I worm them and then two weeks later I worm them again I use um, safeguard for goats I believe it is I'm gonna check and make sure look at the bottom of the screen right here because I'm gonna put exactly what it is and I use three milliliters per gallon for three days and it just does an excellent job. Now I'll worm them and then two weeks later, I do worm them again. In the spring, now in April, I will give them a natural uh, dewormer. So that way, cause they'll be in full swing, laying eggs. Okay, here are the ones from the big chickens today. Got three really pretty ones, very speckly. And then there's the breast. You see how little it is? Which they first start out, they all start out tiny and then they'll get nice and big. And they'll they'll be really nice big eggs once they mature more. <laughs> well guys, here we are out in the garden. And uh, I bought, I went to Rural King and I found this celery. Well, I love celery in soups and stews and things like that. I just love the flavor. I don't like eating it raw, um, not even with peanut butter on it, but I really wanted to try to grow some. Never done it before. Well, in this book right here, Carrots Love Tomatoes. I'll put a link to it in the description box below down there. Um, it will be through Amazon and we are affiliate, so it would help us. We get a small percentage or a small commission uh, for any purchases through our Amazon links. I'll put it down there for you. It's all about companion planting and it is just full of really, really good information. So I've been kind of trying to work towards this to help with my companion planting because if you plant well, you know, things that are beneficial to your plants, it helps them fight against pests and it just, it's really good for them. So anyway, celery is supposed to be really good to plant around beans. And we have a little bit of beans here. Some of my front part of the row there just did not do well. And uh, I pulled them up. But I've got some little empty spots here and there. So I'm going to plant some kind of through the beans. And then I've got this empty end here. So once I finish filling the holes, I'm going to kind of fill it out over here. We'll see, how, we'll see how far it goes. But let's take a look here. Never planted celery spacing 10 to 12 inches apart so they do need a little width to them now I've really only got like a couple of spots in the middle of my beans where I can um, stick one in there but we're gonna do that I'm gonna stick it in there and we're gonna see what happens and then I do have some space over here between my marigolds next to the beans and I'm gonna stick some over there too and we're going to see what happens. You're not supposed to transplant <laughs> early in the day. <laughs> but these have been sitting out in the straight up sun for a few days. And they have, um, they're nice and moist. And it's, we're really having a nice cool front right now. It's supposed to be a high of 75. So, and I'm going to water them down really good here in a minute. So I really think they'll be fine, especially because they've been sitting outside like they have. And uh, I, I think they'll be just fine. And the soil is all staying together uh, in the roots there. So I am just going to get a few more planted here. Try to space them out a little bit. Just kind of squeeze the bottom there. Loosen up all the dirt. I meant to bring my mushroom compost out here with me to uh, mix in with the dirt, but I didn't. And you know me, I'll just wing it. We do have some good rabbit manure that I've put all of, up and down this row. And uh, so that's sitting there. And in a few more days, it'll be time to fertilize the garden again. So we'll get them nice and fertilized. Got eight. 
Y'all know how I measure. This is eight. Half of that was plus four. <laughs> and then we have 12. And you want to plant your plants just like the, the same level they are in the, the pan there, in the little growing cups. <clears throat> I'm going to put all that yummy little rabbit manure and mulch and such right around it. And we're going to have a spare, so I think we're going to put him down there at the other end. Whew, honey, it's getting warm out here now. When you're recording, it takes a bit longer to do your chores. And I was a little later getting out here this morning. I just did not have a good night's sleep, which unfortunately is kind of a norm for me. But last night, don't you hate, I hate it when I wake up in a bad mood. It just aggravates me so bad to wake up. I don't like waking up in a bad mood. I love early mornings. I love waking up cheerful and ready to take on the day. Now y'all check out this row here. I love this row. We've got my tomato plants here that are doing really well. They are just slam full of tomatoes. And the okra here, we're starting to get a few off. And uh, I'm just really pleased. Now, I ate my first tomato the other day, and it was delicious. It was so good. I took it inside, I rinsed it off, and just popped it in my mouth. And it was so stinking good, I gotta tell you. Now, you can see in here, See all the little buds? See the little okras coming? I mean, they are just everywhere. We are going to have lots and lots of okra really soon. I've got enough inside right now, probably to make Andrew some fried okra. Now y'all, this one's big enough to cut, but is it wrong to hope this is the only one I find so I can eat it raw? because I love eating raw gar uh, okra in the garden. I think I'm gonna have to have it. I can't stand it. I couldn't help, help myself, y'all. I had to eat it. Oh my goodness. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So good. And it turned out that's the only one that was ready, so I don't have to feel guilty. Mmm, -mm. so good. Now, if you just watered your tomatoes or it just rained, don't pick your tomatoes. At least wait a day or two if you're gonna have some dry weather. Now, if you see rain coming and like they're almost ripe, it's best to come out and go ahead and pick them. And um, especially if you're gonna have a lot of rain and all because it'll just fill them up, it'll split them. But if you just had a little rain and then you've got a couple of days of sunshine and your tomatoes are, are, are almost there, leave them on the vine and pick them like late in the day or after a couple of days, just keep you on it. Cause that way, all that water that they absorb, the tomatoes, you know, they're mostly water and they absorb all that water. It'll kind of soak up into the plant and then you'll have, instead of a watered down tomato, you will have a concentrated tomato flavor that is absolutely divine. And another tip, y'all. When you walk down your okra road looking for okra, walk to the end, pick what you find, and then turn around and come back down because you'll be amazed at what you actually missed. Now, y'all, look at the carrots. See all those green little sprouts all through there? These are the carrots that I uh, sprouted or germinated using the paper plate and the plastic Ziploc bag method. I'll link it for you in the description below. It's super easy and it just works every time. Now you can see some of them are really close, but I'll come out and I'll kind of, I'll let them grow up for a while and then I'll pick them and then we'll have little baby carrots we'll eat first and it'll give some of the other ones room to grow that we can come back for. 